Hey everyone, Jenny and Mac here from Cruising Maya, and we're back with another episode detailing life aboard our 37-foot sailboat Maya. In the last episode, we officially launched on our most ambitious project yet, a 5,000-mile voyage on our boat, first stop southeast Alaska, then down the coast for a winter in Mexico of Sea of Cortez. Also, in the last video, we announced the opening of our online store at cruisingmaya.com. Lots of great stuff in there, so be sure to check that out. Okay, so let's get back to the story. We are in Comox, and with continued good weather, we are making miles north through British Columbia's Inside Passage. All right, so we are entering Campbell River as kind of our last call before we enter Johnstone Strait. The currents are really starting to pick up. You can see here, we're taking advantage of that. It's awesome. We're going eight knots right now, which is just unheard of. So we're using the tide to our advantage. Love that. And uh, we're basically going to position ourselves to be right at Seymour Narrows. Uh, we're going to spend the night right before there and then uh, we'll transit exactly at slack tide and we'll ride the tide north. Very exciting. We still have beautiful weather. We still have not seen a cloud yet on this trip. Unbelievable. So super psyched on the weather, conditions and everything, and um, yeah, we're just making progress. Seymour Narrows has a long and infamous history. The stretch of water has claimed many lives, most of them before a large rock in the middle of the channel was blown up in the 1950s. Super interesting bit of history there. They actually mined tunnels underneath the rock and blew it up from below. There's a really great video that covers that project, and it's definitely worth a watch. There's a link above in case you're interested in that. Today, passing through Seymour Narrows is pretty straightforward. Basically, all you need to do is show up at slack tide in order to avoid currents that can run up to 15 knots. Okay, so it is the morning. We are transiting Seymour Narrows. It's right on time. We're actually gonna be there probably just about five minutes early. And uh, then we're gonna catch the tide. The tide's gonna carry us up all the way north. It's also worth mentioning that Seymour Narrows is kind of the gateway to where it starts to get a little more rugged. Um, services are fewer and far between. So this is kind of the gateway into uh, the wilderness, I like to view it as. So the tide is starting to pick up and we're seeing that reflected in our speed. We typically travel at about five and a half knots and we're going seven, which is just sweet.
After a very comfortable passage through Johnstone Strait, we dropped the hook in a small bay outside of Port Harvey, and the following morning we continued on to Port McNeil, 33 miles away. All right, so we've got our first little bout of weather, and I wouldn't even call it weather, it's just wind. Headed to Port McNeil today. But yeah, just a good reminder of how lucky we've been with the weather so far. By the time we made it to Port McNeil, the weather had changed and the clouds had moved in. We took the opportunity to refill our water and diesel tanks as well as check the weather report. The forecast showed strong winds moving into the area in the coming days, and this was bad news as we were just about to face our next major hurdle in our path to Alaska, getting across Queen Charlotte Strait and rounding Cape Caution. This area is well known for dangerous sea states and as the name implies, demands caution. Armed with the weather report and full tanks, we headed out to see what we were up against. Good morning, it's the start of another day. We are off headed to Clam Cove, uh, where we will basically wait out some weather or go for Cape Caution. As it turns out, we got our answer with about eight miles to go to Clam Cove. Okay, we're out here in Queen Charlotte Strait, and we were thinking about possibly going rounding Cape Caution today, but the weather just kind of picked up. The there's kind of white caps out here, and I think we're gonna. The safe bet is to go into Clam Cove and just pull up and, and wait for a better, better weather window. Yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be really windy, so we're gonna maybe try Thursday or Friday. It looks definitely settled. So. Okay, it's like maybe a half an hour later, and conditions got way worse, super fast. So. Definitely going to be pulling into Clam Cove and waiting it out. Possibly doing even a happy hour tonight now, so that's a nice consolation prize. We are getting our butts spanked right now. It's blown 25 knots since it gets the tide. We only have a couple miles to go, but it feels like an eternity out here. After a thorough butt kicking in the strait, we wound our way through the narrow and winding entrance into Clam Cove and reflected on the day's events. Well, we made it through. We survived. Cheers. Cheers. We ended up spending the next day at anchor while the winds continued, hoping to make the passage past Cape Caution the following day. All right, so we are just leaving Clam Cove. We thought we were gonna go do uh, Cape Caution today, but it's still windy and the forecast is looking better for tomorrow. Yeah, it so. howled all night and we hardly slept and then got up at 4 a.m because that was the time we thought we'd maybe leave to do the crossing. And we've been up ever since. Now we're gonna move anchorages and we'll be better set up for doing Cape Caution. Yeah, the uh, anchorage we're going to is a little, it's gonna be a longer day for our Cape Caution crossing, but we have to like snake out of this anchorage and we didn't want to do that at, like in the dark and everything. So um, even though our anchorage is gonna be a little further away, it's gonna be a better anchorage. <laughs> We've got our first little taste of poking outside the, the cove and it is, it is gross out. I mean, the wind's light, but you can see here the, the swell it is, it's nasty. So it looks like another layover day. This, today is gonna to be at uh, Port Alexander. Da, 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 
And so, after another layover day, early the next morning we left Port Alexander and headed north towards Queen Charlotte Strait. Queen Charlotte Strait. Wind northwest 10 to 15 knots, diminishing to light this morning, then becoming northwest 10 to 15 late this afternoon. Forty-nine miles and roughly ten hours of travel, with Cape Caution to the south of us, we dropped the hook in Fury Cove on Penrose Island. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop for now. Before we wrap things up though, we want to mention that during our Cape Caution crossing, we anchored in Millbrook Cove for a few hours, allowing for the tide to fall before we continued around the next exposed peninsula. We have read reports that falling tides in these big open ocean entrances can produce some very unsettled sea states, which is why we were out traveling only during the flood tide. Okay, so with us in Fury Cove, we are 350 miles from Anacortes with roughly 300 miles to go to Alaska. Be sure to join us in the next episode as we make a mad dash to get to Prince Rupert before a major storm hits. And we're racing the clock because of big systems moving in, so we're just pushing hard. And we've done over 100 miles today. We're five miles from the anchorage, and we just hit a pretty sizable log. All of that and a whole lot more coming up. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel. It's free and it really helps us out. Also a reminder that the Cruising Maya online store is open for business. Special edition Alaska t-shirts available as well as a disco mug with more items coming in the future. If you want to help us out, shopping in our store is the best way to support us. Okay, so that's it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you here next time. Cheers. Okay, so we are re reaving Red Buff. Oh boy. Sit down here. Yeah. <clears throat>